Good morning, and uh, thank you to the um, organisers of the World Future Fuel Summit and Expo for inviting me to talk. Uh, I have 12 minutes, so I will carry on um, and uh, go through it um, as quickly as I can. So, my name is Bill Island. Uh, I'm the Chief Exec at Logan Energy, um, and uh, we've been dealing with fuel cells and hydrogen for over 28 years. Um, and so we consider ourselves hydrogen system experts. I will cover today um, who we are, what we do, um, what are the issues that we're trying to solve, um, some of our key projects and selected case studies. First of all, um, who are we? Uh, as I said, uh, we were founded in 1995 in the US, um, in the UK in 2005. Uh, we were ostensibly installing combined cooling heat and power plants um, uh, using fuel cells um, to start with. Uh, and then uh, we decided that uh, that actually um, running off fossil fuels wasn't the right thing to do going forward. Um, because one of the key advantages um, around that was, um, was carbon emissions, um, particularly in the UK and Europe. Um, and so we looked at renewable energy. And in 2014, uh, we got involved with the Leaving My Earth Community Energy Project, which I'll describe later. But that's basically, we basically cut our teeth on hydrogen um, and uh, energy systems and managing energy systems and uh, distributed networks. From there, um, we found that there were loads of holes in the supply chain. So we set up a number of subsidiary companies to deal with those holes um, and uh, brought quite a lot of that expertise, if not all of it, in, in house. Uh, from there, we've grown. We have a joint venture in China, um, and we have uh, we're based in Scotland, um, and we have a company in the Netherlands. Uh, very quickly, some of our customers, um, some big names uh, from uh, from Europe, um, everybody from um, Store Energy to uh, Enegas, um, some of the OEMs like Hydrogenics, people like that. Um, and uh, some of the big, bigger organisations, and then also um, the late Queen. Uh, we also um, installed a fuel cell in the Crown Estates properties. So what um, we do pretty much everything around hydrogen. Uh, that includes sizing um, the renewables to go with it, uh, optimising, and, and where we add the most value is actually optimising uh, all these subcomponents. We can provide those individually. Um, or we can provide the whole system. And uh, I think we would add the most value to projects um, uh, if, we, if we do all of it, um, rather than just being an EPC. We do EPC work um, because there aren't many people around that can do that um, around hydrogen because it's uh, actually quite a tricky little molecule. Um, and uh, uh, so, so that's, that's what we do. Um, we will, uh, we've developed our own software um, around smart grid management. Um, we will size and select the right um, electrolyzer, um, operation, um, technology, um, pressure output. We'll then look at the hydrogen compression and storage. How much do you need? What pressures? Um, and uh, that's, that really depends on what you're going to be using it for and how much you need to store. Um, and we've also, uh, uh, we also produce our own hydrogen refueling stations. Uh, we convert vehicles. Uh, we're working on converting ships um, and trains. Um, and uh, we also look at the industrial side of things. So um, that's where we started from. What we um, is try and modularize that so we can provide those um, in uh, in key modules um, to so they're standardized from our point of view to basically um, uh, um, support the um, HGVs, buses, rail, marine, large energy users, feedstock for industrial processes. Again, for heat and power, and I'll cover some of these later. So the Leaving Mouth project, well, this was basically a demonstration project around um, a microgrid. Um, and here we had a wind turbine. We added solar um, panels, uh, had an energy management system um, in the center there in the oval uh, section um, in here. Um, we had the energy center and then we had private wires going out to all of these buildings. Um, and we used renewable energy to provide electricity to those buildings when they were sufficient. Um, and uh, the idea was we generated too much electricity. We generated hydrogen, stored it, used that for regenerating electricity when there was insufficient renewables, uh, but also as a transport fuel, um, as well as a small demonstration five kilowatt boiler.
Um, so looking at the energy storage, um, this is uh, basically the electrolyzer um, production skid going in. This is the fuel cell um, to reproduce electricity storage uh, being added in here, and this is the uh, the unit going into it uh, um, uh, into the, an existing building. The uh, relocatable uh, concept for the refueler was that uh, it would fit on the back of a lorry. Uh, we could deploy it. It could be at a particular location for months, years, whatever. And uh, it was an enabler project, uh, enabler unit around uh, 50, 60 kilowatts um, uh, of input power. Uh, and again, the concept was that it was pre-commissioned. You could plonk it on the ground uh, on concrete um, uh, supports connect up electricity and water and you basically had a refueling station that could also refuel down here MCPs uh, for hydrogen to distribute hydrogen around. And then again the transport, um, the uh, two refuse collection vehicles were diesel hydrogen uh, dual fuel, five transits that were diesel hydrogen dual fuel and then ten fuel cell range extended uh, electric vehicles. So um, where do we sit? Uh, we're manufacturer independent. Um, uh, and what we do is we do all of these components in orange. Um, we're, we're getting in more into the uh, subcomponents as far as electrolysis. We don't develop electrolyzer stacks uh, or compressors, but we do actually go a long way down the line to actually getting um, sort of subcomponents and doing balanced plant around those. And obviously we don't manufacture chillers or anything like that. But as I said, we uh, do our own control panels, our own energy management systems, uh, our own dispensing software. We've done world first on uh, using the SA2601MC method um, for dispensing hydrogen. Um, and we have developed IP, both hardware and software around there. So um, our model is very much around um, being technology and supplier agnostic. Um, we've got a great track record of delivered projects. Uh, we're very customer focused in the fact that we haven't actually delivered um, a, a project to a customer um, that they have tendered. Uh, what we've done is we've won the tender um, and we've then discussed with the customer um, what they actually need um, to, uh, to solve their, their problems or whatever they're trying to do and then modified potentially what they've asked for to actually what they really need uh, to optimize that. As I said, we've brought a lot of this in house. Um, uh, so we do all our own pipe work, controls, um, uh, sort of pressure testing, commissioning, um, and we do all our own operating and maintenance, which is very key as well. Part of the integration process actually allows us to uh, reduce the capex and the opex um, by uh, sort of integrating those uh, those elements um, uh, very well. Um, so what are the issues? Uh, uh, this is a um, uh, sort of a, a thing from NASA. I think it's a quite amazing bit of graphics, but it's also quite horrifying looking at the uh, temperature rise around the world. Um, and then uh, this then sw swivels on its side and shows you the gradual increase um, over the years, but very specifically in the last 20 odd years uh, and showing the average uh, world average increase in temperature. So that's what I'm doing. That's what our company is doing, is trying to uh, mitigate this and reduce this impact and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels and emission. What are the issues? Uh, again, it's around energy storage. This is for the GB, if this is for um, uh, the UK, um, but actually looking at the blue line, that's our, that's our heat um, or gas usage for heat um, for over winter. Um, the red line is our electricity over four years, and then the uh, um, grey block diagram here is actually our, our fuel for vehicles. Um, and what we're trying to do is actually match all of those to actually renewable outlets. Um, so we're looking at renewables, we're looking at uh, um, in summer uh, sunshine, um, and uh, in winter more um, more wind. When you look at add those two together, it looks like it'll be a nice, nice easy um, profile. But actually, you then look at it daily and you see how, how much it varies. You then look um, uh, this is wind um, output um, in three locations in Denmark, UK and Germany. And just looking at this over two months. And this is the grid load, electricity grid load um, over a week in the UK again. Um, and just showing the spikes. And we're trying to actually match this sort of thing up to actually the demand here. Um, what are we talking about as far as um, energy storage? Uh, we're talking about renewables, sustainability, and uh, and very much time. 
So we're looking at minutes with um, or, or hours with uh, with remote controls or batteries uh, for phones and that sort of thing. Uh, daily, you're looking at solar um, uh, to charge um, uh, batteries or whatever. So basically, the daily daily production uh, and then usage. Um, looking at hydro, so for longer term. Then looking at annual, so you've got elephant grass here. Uh, you've got bio oils, uh, biofuels. Then multi-annual, so you've got down here short rotation coppice willow, uh, which is a European crop. There's a three-year rotation. And then um, something that people don't really think about is the fact that fossil fuels are, in fact, from renewable source. It's just the time scale that um, uh, doesn't work for us. And again, looking at the options for storage, this is uh, from the European Union, basically saying hydrogen and synthetic fuels um, are for large scale and longer duration. Uh, which we agree with. Issues to consider security of supply, again, looking at uh, fuel shortages, uh, particularly in the uh, uh, current world climate. Um, also security of cost, again, with the world climate going up and down um, uh, as, as far as uh, the cost goes um, uh, with political situations. And then economic, providing economic stability. Look at um, sort of uh, the traditional world powers where the oil and gas is coming look at the potential new world powers where there is wind and solar on land and this is not looking at uh, um, uh, en renewable energy in this studies um, again here um, this is something we've delivered um, this is um, a basically um, a, an electrolyzer at a wind farm uh, we're compressing it uh, compressing the hydrogen putting it into trailers driving the 50 miles down the road um, to the refueling station, and that's the refueling station there. And we're actually doing all of those components and designing all of that. Again, uh, the build process here, we do that in-house. Uh, then uh, we complete the project, uh, complete the unit, we fully commission it, and then we deploy it, put it on the ground. It's a matter of uh, a few hours or, or a few days to actually recommission it uh, on site, and you then got an operational um, uh, refueling station. Uh, here again, this is the largest capacity refueling station in Europe, uh, in, again in Northern Ireland. Um, this will do between three and four tonnes a day um, if you operate it 24-7. But again, that's basically renewable hydrogen generation uh, to, to fuel fleets of, uh, of buses. Uh, this is the build, uh, starting off with the frame. We've developed our own frame here. Uh, that's a 40-foot frame, um, uh, fits on an ISO, uh, ISO blocks, uh, and then we fit it. Um, again, complete it. And then, uh, interesting one here, which is we're looking at uh, a whiskey distillery where they want to go zero carbon. We have sized the wind and solar array to go uh, to produce enough electricity um, uh, in combination with hydrogen storage to then put that through for their thermal demand for the distilling process to generate the steam. Off our um, data, so this is looking at sort of how much hydrogen is stored within the storage that we've sized. Uh, obviously, uh, we've got wind uh, in Scotland, uh, not so much sun. Uh, so in in, uh, in summer, we have uh, a, a slight deficit. That's why we need the storage. And then we look at the excess generation from excess wind that, that we are produce, um, that we are generating, can generate hydrogen. So we can then look at the number of truck movements of taking the, uh, the hydrogen off site. Uh, and then here we've got some import of hydrogen or um, a biofuel to maintain the zero uh, zero. Another project in the Netherlands, this is one hydrogen valley of, uh, of the year last year. Um, this is uh, sea fuel, which is basically taking seawater using renewables to produce um, fuel for um, vehicles in Tenerife in the Canary Islands. Uh, we've also converted vehicles. Uh, so this is an electric vehicle. We've basically had a fuel cell range. Um, we're also doing vessels. So this is actually inland waterway vessel in the Netherlands. Um, and we're, we're dealing with that and doing Lloyd's Registry approved um, story. Um, and then we come up against uh, various various um, tasks um, uh, that, that need to be solved. This is actually for a mobile refueler, but can be used for decanting and, uh, uh, and for refueling, again, um, as a temporary uh, provision. And then again, coming back to our fuel cells, uh, deploying fuel cells uh, in the field for a power generation running off hydrogen. Quickly, top tips, learn from the demonstrators, don't do demonstrators again, uh, there's no point. Um, work within your competency, um, that is um, key. A lot of people are saying they can do things um, when they can't. 
collaboration, world not world domination. Uh, this comes from we actually need to partner to actually get things done, um, rather than trying to uh, do it all yourself. Uh, be a realist, realistic um, again about what's achievable. Um, more importantly, deliver. Uh, and then the final one um, is hydrogen is not the answer. It's part of the answer. And that's what we need to understand is there is no silver bullet. It's a combination of all of these. And we actually incorporate batteries, combustion engines, fuel cells, hydrogen um, uh, into energy systems. So thanks very much and uh, look forward to questions.